Well, his body possesses some anatomical discrepancies. Some offshoots of the esophagus and trachea that almost seem umbilical in nature. I'd... I've never seen anything like it. And you never will again. 21st century genetic engineering will not only eradicate the Siamese twins and the alligator skin people, but you're going to be hard-pressed to find a, a slight overbite or not-so-high cheekbone. You see, I've seen the future, and the future looks just like him. Imagine going through your whole life looking like that. That's why it's left up to the self-made freaks like me and the conundrum to remind people. Remind people of what? Nature abhors normality. It can't go very long without creating a mutant. Do you know why? No, why? I don't either. It's a mystery. Maybe some mysteries are never meant to be solved. <laughs> Welcome to episode 48 of Most Unwanted and X-Files podcast. I'm Luke. And I'm Chex. Very, very stern, very sombre start to the show there. I'm so upset, Luke. Yeah. I'm so upset. It's really sad because before today, we we were sort of... Um, Jovial? We were, yeah. We were really looking forward to talk about this episode, for better or worse, and we won't say what we think till we get into the episode. And then we've just had a real shit that are dropped on us right oh, before we started recording. So before we started recording, we found out, it's been reported on the news, that um, due to the Brexit negotiations that are going on at the moment, if we go out on a, with a no-deal Brexit, that my passport no longer qualifies mm. to go to my own stag do. <laughs> now... I know this is a first world problem. I know, I know it's not a major thing in the, in the yeah. later day, but this summed up with everything else that's happening in the world right now is pushing me over the edge, Luke. <laughs> over I the can't edge. take it. Oh. We've had a little bit, so we, we took a break from recording, didn't we? We've yeah. had a little bit of a moan to each other. Yeah. We put the world to rights. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> we won't, we won't bore you on air because they, let's, People listen to these to escape the real world, you know what I mean? That's what we want to do. I could escape, <laughs> but I can't even leave my own country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why would you want to leave? It's okay. Why would you want to leave? I didn't want freedom of movement through 28 countries. I didn't want that. I didn't want that. I didn't want healthcare throughout <laughs> Europe. I didn't want it. I didn't want it. Didn't want medicine supplies to not run out. <laughs> I, I didn't want cheap food. I didn't want it. So it's all going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, let's move on from politics. It's, yeah, sorry, it's, guys. It's such a, it's such a, yeah, it, it's really oppressive lately. I always find like the news cycle is so oppressively about what's Trump done, how's Brexit doing, um, what's happening with Russia. It's all like, yeah, it's like hammering you with, we're probably going to die soon. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it probably won't. Let's be honest. Like, I think. I think in the the grand scheme of things, things are getting better on a slow curve. Yeah, you know definitely, I mean? definitely. So let's look at the positives. And uh, we've got X Files to watch. We've got X Files to, to talk about. And I don't care whether a, an apocalypse happens; we'll <laughs> still be recording most unwanted. But in the case that there is an, apoc- an apocalypse, yeah. next week, yeah, what will you be up to next week? In the case of an apocalypse. Well, no, not in the case. No, of an no, no, no. Let's that's, do that's... both. Let's do both. Okay. In, in in the case of an apocalypse, what will you do next week? I would um, <clears throat> I'd probably secure a food supply. I would um, but the thing is, you've got to make sure your food's fresh. So I would take a living human being and slowly. Not again. Not I mean, again. Maybe You're not a close my legs. friend. You're not <laughs> having my legs, my arms, my ears, <laughs> any of my limbs, or. A, a, Appendages, <laughs> definitely not that one. <laughs> in, in, in the case of an apocalypse next week, I would probably. You see, here's the Kelvin thing: Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. <laughs> That's where I'm go. You know what? I would probably. I'd like to think that I'd be the kind of guy that would be resourceful and that would, <laughs> so, you know, get out there, get what I need, shelter up, save a few people, and I, I'd like to think I'd be that guy. In reality, you probably you, like everyone is probably going to be like the ninety-seven percent that die instantly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it. In reality, they, they they don't know how to get fresh water and yeah, like, exactly. Die of dehydration. Like, wh- how many people 
it, if you was to say a zombie apocalypse, let's just put, it, put, this, put this, one this, example out there, right? How many people, if this happened theoretically, how many people would literally die just trying to get to the nearest supermarket because that's the only idea everyone's got. Yeah. Get to the local supermarket, and you you can't you can't fit a hundred thousand people in a supermarket, Luke. You We've can't. tried. We've tried. We've tried, and we failed. <laughs> and the great and the supermarket still going. <laughs> supermarket crash of ninety two. <laughs> um, yeah, I always I always laugh when when there's people who are like, oh, these people who say, oh, I cu- I couldn't wait for the zombie apocalypse. I'd be great in it. They would die first. Yeah. The people who always think they've got it all sussed out. They're knackered. Yeah. They're, they're going to get eaten. Or, I don't know, yeah, they'll just fall off a balcony and, like, die or something like that. Yeah. I like, um, I like the people who've got, like, there are people that have, like, zombie um, apocalypse survival kits. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it's it consists of, like, a bag with four bottles of water in and an axe. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, great, you'll survive that first six hours brilliantly. The, the <laughs> Unless you've got, like, a basement <laughs> with, like, 400 gallons yeah. or whatever it is. I, I always think of that, though. It's some nerd who's, like, I'm prepping for the zombie apocalypse. There's going to be some maniac who's like... It's going to be some jock and yeah. just punches him in the nose and yeah. takes his back. Exactly. <laughs> He'll just rob him and leave him for dead. <laughs> we'll be the yeah. nerds. That's and what we'd be. Unfortunately, in hard times, it's always the physically strongest thing to get on top. Yeah. And I, we're not on us. I, you always... You always Hear about in medieval times how like people like b- pillagers used to come in, take farmers' grain that they've like spent years collecting. They would live on and they'd murder the yeah, farmers, and right. we'd be the farmers. We'd be the farmers, and that's look at all these. I've, I've collected all these tins. <laughs> They're not ripe enough yet. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I don't think we'd survive. No. In, uh, in so next this. week. In, in answer to your question, next week in the, in the case of an apocalypse, yeah. I'd be dead. You'd be dead. Um, probably me too. Yeah. But what would what would you be doing if you don't die? Um, if it's not an apocalypse, yeah, yeah. Um, I like how you didn't. What? I like how you basically get with. I might still die. <laughs> <laughs> um, next week, I've actually got some exciting news. If you want to okay. get onto good news, oh, good news. That's um, what we need. I'm going to um, do like a well. It's where we where me and Gemma get married. Um, we've got the um, like food tasting session, mm-hmm. but they sort of go above and beyond. So like they've invited us to this meal, they've let us choose multiple options from all the menu, and you get like a big three course meal with all these different tasting sessions. Okay, and then there's an hour wine tasting, so you can try all the different wines, figure out what you want, uh, prosecco on the door and stuff like mm. that, a little bottle of bubbly or whatever. Just just generally just a nice sort of just a nice little evening that they've got available for you, and um, there's a few people going. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So Sounds good. It, it, it's become a bit real now where like, mm. we're actually having to get things in place. Like before, mm. there's, it's all well and good saying, yeah, we'll do this, that, and this. But nothing ever really, it was just a decision and then nothing came of it. Yeah. Now things are happening. So it's interesting, scary, but interesting. I think, yeah, any type of big event that you're planning, um, and in this case, the wedding, <laughs> yeah. is always going to be um, stressful and yeah. scary. Well, I, I tend to think of it as, because let's be honest, we could get married for a couple of hundred quid, uh, uh, just get a certificate and that's it. Um, so I t- just basically tend to think of it as, this is what it would be like to organise uh, like a charity function or a charity mm, event. Yeah. Because basically what we're doing is, it's a 10 to 15 grand party yeah. that we're throwing for all of our friends. Yeah. That's basically what we're paying for. That's essentially, yeah. So I'm trying to look at it like that and it's, it's not so scary. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it'd be fine. It'd be fine. Yeah. Just the speeches, that's what you got to work on. I speeches. can't wait to hear your speech. You know what we should do? Yeah. Do you think there's any way we re- could record your speech and release, um, release it? Um, I mean, yeah, if you want we to could, record we could it. Do yeah. that. I can't yeah. promise. Put it in the blooper section. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I'm not going to promise on the quality. But, um, Are you nervous about it? Um, no, I don't, I'm not that nervous when it comes to stuff like that. See, I can't give speeches, can I? No. We know that I can't give speeches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yours is... I'm going to be blunt here. Yeah. A travesty. <laughs> last, time, last time you gave a speech. <laughs> you stood up, bottled it, and said thanks for coming. Honestly, I was shaking for two hours later. And how weird is it that I can do a podcast or I can, mm. like, I, I, I literally sell for a living. I just talk to random people. Yeah, yeah. But put me in a spotlight in a room mm. like that. And I just freeze, and I just freeze, and it was oh horrendous. Mm, I, the only time I uh, I panic and stuff like that is if 
I haven't prepared, like, mentally, I haven't prepared for it. Yeah. Um, because it's the same with, like, it, this probably happens with more people. Uh, I mean, let me know if, let it, let us know if this happens to you as well. Have you ever picked up the phone without knowing exactly what you're about to say to the person on the phone? Yeah, yeah. Like, normally, if I, uh, at work, I answer the phone and I say, hello, a company, Luke yeah. speaking. If I just pick up the phone, like, rushed, and I haven't planned that in my head, it you goes... Panic. I, I panic and just say the stupidest thing on yeah. the phone, and it's like, I'm at work, I can't say it. So, so I'll just go to normal stuff, then panic and realise what I've just said. <laughs> Try and, and it's just an absolute mess. Yeah. And then that makes the, makes the call bad yeah. from that point onwards. I just can't recover. No, I, I'm terrible at recovering. I really yeah. am. So, so, like, same for speeches. If I haven't prepared, like, and I know... Um, I've already started like in my head thinking of the beats and stuff Structure, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. how it's going to go. Um, but I just need to actually write it down. Have you have you got pause for laughter in three <laughs> points in your speech? Not yet, but <laughs> nay. nay. <laughs> You've got to put that. And I, I just want to. We need to get a cricket sound effect at some point. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I've got to do the insane board and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this you became a podcast um, edits, gags yeah. in your speech. <laughs> Oh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. How about yourself? Are you up to anything next week? Um, up to a few things. Um, <laughs> keep the comic thing going. Oh, the last here three we weeks. go again. No, I'm going to see uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, oh, I do want to see that. That is tomorrow, actually. I'm yeah, going to see that. Um, first time I've gone to uh, a Marvel film like opening night. Yeah, I, I don't know how busy it's going to be. Probably absolutely round. Yeah, I'd I imagine it is. Yeah, it wasn't when I booked the tickets, but. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you know. Um, so, well, yeah. Those sort of cinemas, people just turn up. They don't do so. True, true, yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm going to see that for, uh, tomorrow. Um, and then, sort of towards the end of next week, the team that I support, uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers, mm. um, have an FA Cup match. If you don't know about football, this is completely over your head. Mm. But they have an FA Cup match with Man United, and it's at the perfect time of 8 o'clock on a Saturday night. So I am going to. I'm not going to the actual match because yeah, ticket, tickets were like gold dust yeah, trying to get yeah. one of those. But yeah, the uh, the pub in the pubs in Wolverhampton are going to be busy. They're going to be hopefully joyous that, yeah. that we beat Man Fingers crossed. It's it's a tough game, but you know you've got to beat them to stay yeah. in. You know, really, like, <laughs> quite literally. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Should be a good. good yeah, game. yeah, should yeah. be fun. Um, but yeah, that's that's my week really, or how it's looking. Well, so we've, we've also got one more thing to do. We do have one more thing to do, and that is get on with the latest episode. Sort my passport out. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> Let's talk about the latest episode of the X Files. On with the show. Oh no. Oh, oh. we've oh. Cro- we cro- uh. we crossed. Oh, oh. On, on with the, the show. show. So this week we are looking at episode 20 of season 2. Uh, this episode was entitled Humbug. Uh, it was directed by Kim Manners, uh, written by Darren Morgan, who, um, it's in the production notes, but this has already been mentioned before, he uh, was the fluke man. In yes, episode I remember, earlier in the yeah. Season. He's also the brother of uh, Glenn Morgan. Glenn Morgan, yeah. Um, and this was, the original air date was March the 31st, 1995. Is this the first episode he's directed? Or did he uh, direct or written, did you say? He, um, he wrote it. Uh, okay. He helped write Blood okay. as well. But this is the first one he wrote solely okay. himself. So we start in Gibsonton, Florida. And there are two kids uh, splashing around in a pool outside, uh, laughing. Uh, and it's at night time. And we see someone watching them from the trees. And they've sort of got... We see their hand and it's sort of misshapen, I suppose. Or it looks yeah, it looks strange. First, my first impressions was it's a monster episode. Yeah, that's what yeah, exactly what I thought. Yeah, um, and we hear a twig snap, and the kids look round and they don't see anything heading towards them. Uh, but we know this this hand or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> this thing is is moving towards them. We then see this thing basically jump into the pool one side, and we see this Jaws style shot yeah. where it's sort of coming near the kids from underneath the water. And he jumps out and scares them. And it's this human... Well, it is a human, yeah. as we find out. But he looks scaly. Yeah. And initially I'm thinking, oh, 
this is quite sudden to be showing the monster off. Yeah, yeah. And then we have all of our prejudices <laughs> are completely show- brought to the <laughs> forefront as we find out that this man is both of these children's father. I like the twist straight off the bat. Yeah, I really I, like the I, twist. I, I love that, like... Be, at the beginning, because it it makes you feel terrible. And yeah. like, oh, he's just a guy with a, <laughs> with a deformity. With a deformity yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we find out that this guy is called uh, Gerald Glazebook. Uh, his sons are Lionel and Robert. Doesn't really matter too yeah. much, but there's a bit of background, I suppose. Uh, and they have this sweet family moment uh, where they're asking him if he saw a lot of weird stuff this year. And he says it was the weirdest show ever. Um, but he tells them they've got to get to bed now. Um, and then we see something else mm. in the bushes, and again we see another we see another hand. Um, we see it jump into the pool just as as uh, Gerald did. Um, it's only the like the dad in the yeah pool yeah the kid the kids have left the pool and it's just Gerald swimming at, swimming around in the pool, and then this thing just launches itself at Gerald and looks to bite him or like yeah yeah wound him in or some like sense. A chunk yeah yeah. Um, we see him try and get out of the pool, but he's sort of pulled back in by this thing um, and it sort of pans out and we see uh, a van um, on the side it says Gerald the Alligator Man Um, so this is where we find out what this man was Um, but yeah we're we're sort of left with that uh, as we go into the opening credits yeah interesting start with like the diversion and it was like a double diversion I think if you like Um, so yeah my first thoughts was okay Monster of the Week. Then I thought, oh, okay. But then it turned out to be a Monster of the yeah, Week. Or yeah. at least that's what I thought it was, the main premise was going to be. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it, interesting. I, I, was, I was curious. Yeah, it, it really played with your expectations. And it, it, it it's the first X-Files episode that's made me... It's sort of subverted your expectations for exactly what you... Ex- yeah. You know, I keep saying expected a lot there. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think this scene was key. Yeah. Because... As the episode went on, mm-hmm. I sort of I was almost shocked mm-hmm. with the, the the route it went. Yeah, but I I think if you didn't have this scene, it doesn't play as much. Mm, yeah, so I think you needed this scene, and it's like, oh, monster of the week. Here we go. We know what we're getting. We've had mm-hmm. we've had these before, and then it gives it room to sort of breathe and sort of just mm-hmm. develop naturally, which yeah. I liked. Yeah, yeah, I I really liked that seed that they planted. Yeah, or potato. Maybe. <laughs> oh, that, 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 that. Like little nod to yeah, the end, end of the episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that scene is also very um that, that one also plays with your expectations yeah. as well. Uh, but we'll get to that a bit later. Um after the credits we see or after the opening scene, um we're in the X Files office and we see Mulder giving Scully a picture of uh Glazebrook, uh, Glazebrook. Um and Scully asks what happened to him. She's expecting that this Disorder that he's got was is the cause of death, or yeah. you know. but it, we find out that Mulder says that he had something called ichthyosis, which is a skin disease, uh, which leads to scales developing. Um, I guess it's sort of like in a a really extreme version of like psoriasis or something like that. Maybe so is this a, a real disease? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, can, you can. Uh, I know, like you can get skin disorders similar to this that are in a milder form, and then like from that it can yeah turn into a, a scale problem. I guess. Yeah, basically. yeah. I think it's what, um, not to go too much into comics again, but do you know um, Killer Croc from... Well, that's that's what I thought, like, that, that immediately that's the association that I made I think as well, it's exactly the same. I think he has there. this disease, ichthyosis, but it's like a, a comic book version of yeah, it where of course, yeah. he's got diamonds, hard skin. <laughs> anyway, um, this isn't a Batman episode. Uh, we uh, Mulder then shows another photo, and it basically shows... Uh, an entry wound that Gerald has um, that he theorizes from some kind of weapon, maybe mm. it's like a gaping hole, isn't yeah, it? Basically, yeah, yeah. I, I, it is. It is strange. Like I said, I thought maybe it was a bite mm. or something like that. Um, he says that there's there's no other like strange signs to the body. He, like sort of says there's no evidence of like tampering, cannibalism, this, that, and the other. And he says, but there have been forty eight attacks over the last twenty eight years that have occurred in multiple states. To different types of victims um, that all have this same puncture wound. Yeah, yeah. Um, he suspects a, a serial killer, but he does say that serial killers usually escalate their attacks. So this is strange that it's just stayed mm-hmm. at the same sort of rate. And then Scully sort of sympathizes with this guy and his condition, saying, How does anyone live with this yeah. uh, for their life, basically? Mulder also mentions um, it, 
the possibility of it being um, a, something to do with a cult. Mm-hmm. But um, that, I mean, that doesn't that doesn't make sense either because it like it doesn't have anything to do with any known cult that he's ever come across. And yeah. let's be honest. If anyone's going to have the information, it's going to be Mulder. Yeah, he's he's gonna he's got to have a lot of information on wacky and sort of. It's weird that's not in one state. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, it's uh, right. And later in the episode, you realise why. Yeah. It's, it's almost every state in the US. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's that's strange as well. It's not yeah. like localized. Exactly. I like that they sort of yeah they keep sprinkling in these details that sort of make sense by the end of it. Yeah. But yeah. It's a uh, it's a really well written episode in that in yeah. that respect for just the the um the reveal at the end yeah anyway. definitely but um but again we'll get to all that I'm sure if you've watched it before you know the big reveal <laughs> but we'll we'll try and keep a bit of suspense um anyway we are then at uh Gibsonton Florida again uh, and there's a picture of Glaze Brook uh, on his coffin um we see there's flowers all around it and all these different mourners um and initially it's not shown off but we do see some signs in the crowd as to what oh, or to who these mourners are should I say uh, one of the guys has got like bright pink hair yeah. you know and it's straight off that this is a different kind of like funeral procession I guess yeah um, the priest's on the podium uh, and he's reading his rights as Mulder and Scully uh, sit down uh, amongst the crowd um, and then as the priest gets to the bottom of his page he then turns the page with his foot yeah at this point I, I sort of start to realise that he must have been. I don't know what the. I don't know whether there is there is a politically correct term. Is it a sideshow that they call? They it? call them sideshows, yeah. And I yeah. think that's, that's, that's sort of, it's almost like a circus act, almost, isn't I, it? I think that sideshow is sort of like the accepted term for what they used to call in like the twenties freak shows and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you could tell right away that oh, he was part of a sideshow, and yeah. then you, uh, instantly you sort of. Constantly looking at the rest of the crowd mm. and sort of figuring out, okay, where do these guys play in this? Exactly, and these these are sort of uh, revealed again. Um, it reveals different parts of this sideshow. We find out uh, the mother of the children uh, and his wife uh, was a bearded lady yeah. uh, as she's mourning. Um, we see a man in the crowd uh, take a swig of a flask um, and then he places it into his pocket alongside uh, what is a smaller sort of man attached to him oh, I thought it was a baby like, yeah, a, yeah. You know, like a I don't know what you call them but like those sort of carriers that you have yeah. a baby because it's got like little shoes yeah, sticking yeah. out yeah um, again it's, it's hard to tell in this one the The only reason I could tell it was a, an attached smaller person was because of the uh, the script notes oh, okay, <laughs> that I was yeah. looking at well I mean I thought it was weird that the baby didn't have a head. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I, I didn't know what quite what it what bit, was going on. Bit of a give, giveaway, yeah. Yeah, babies um, tend to have heads. <laughs> <laughs> Just a general rule of Different thumb. Rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah. um, Scully then turns around and sees a row of uh, some more deformed people behind her. Uh, again, I don't know if deformed they, um, isn't the right word. I don't think. No, is no, it? it's I, t- like, I took this from the script, but when I read it, I thought, is yeah, that right? like yeah, the problem yeah. is, it's, yeah. you don't know. It's like it, yeah, that's a, if I say anything I, that is uh, offensive, I don't mean it. I am yeah. literally reading from the script. And I, I, I'll happily, say, I, I'm not sure what the. I, I feel like I'm just going to get myself into trouble. <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether. Yeah. Is it politically correct? Is it dwarfs? It's not midgets, is it? No, I don't. I, 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 I honestly, don't I just know. don't know, and I. I know one of them's really offensive, and I know the other one's one is accepted. accepted. Yeah, yeah. But then you can like the, the, some people I think prefer dwarf, like I think, small of stature and stuff like that. I think and, dwarfism is like the scientific like sort of yeah. diagnosis. But yeah. anyway, yeah, there, there's. Um, I'll just preface this now. If if we do it, like we're not meaning to offend any, anybody. Yeah. Like so, if we if we do, it's just it's yeah. ignorance more than yeah, yeah. anything else. Yeah, and correct us if if yeah, if you feel know the free, correct yeah. terms, let us know. Because, yeah, we'd rather know going forward. Um, but anyway, yeah, Scully uh, turns around and sees these. Uh, one of the, the guys smiles at, at Scully. Um, and she smiles back. Um, we then see, uh, as they turn around, the coffin starting to shake. And the sheriff uh, jumps up and sort of picks up the coffin, coffin with some other uh, people there. And pull it away. And we see the earth starting to shake. And a man emerges from the <laughs> earth. Uh, he exclaims, um, or we find out later on that this guy is called Doctor Blockhead, and he's a, he's one hell of a showman. <laughs> he is a showman. There's a few notes about that. that he's I'll very charismatic. There's a reason. Oh, okay, um, okay. But we'll get into that in the production notes okay. at the end. Uh, anyway, he this is Doctor Blockhead. 
and he says whilst bursting out of the, the ground, I took a lot of uh, of the speeches from this verbatim just because they're quite poetic. In yeah, the, I, the like, way I they really say. like the speeches, yeah. So Blockhead says, having not known the deceased personally, I am in no position to perform a proper eulogy. I'm sure he was a nice guy, etc., etc., but as an admirer of the man's work, I am in a position to perform an impromptu tribute in his honour, namely ramming this spike into my chest. As he then proceeds to smack uh, a railroad spike into yeah. his chest, blood spurts out. The crowd gasps. Yeah. Uh, everyone is um, disgusted by this display. They all get up and sort of. Everyone rushes up. Everyone off. rushes him and sort of takes him away. As we're left with Mulder and Scully sat down, as Mulder says, I can't wait for the wake. I belly laughed. Yeah. I absolutely. Like, I, I just remember, and I remember Jem walked in, because Jem, Jem was in the other room, and she was like, are you watching X-Files? Yeah. Because I, I, I was just belly laughing at it, because I just found this so funny. Yeah. Like, the whole scene building up, and I was like, this isn't the normal X-Files episode. Yeah. You sort of got that feeling, and then that charisma, as I say, the, the, uh, was it Blockhead, his name? Yeah, like, Do- Dr. Blockhead. Dr. Blockhead. Yeah. So yeah, his sort of charismatic speech, and I really enjoyed that. And then just building up to this perfectly timed quip from mm-hmm. Mulder. As the, as everyone literally just shuffles off screen. And they and leave then, it just long yeah, enough. Yeah. Just long enough. I honestly, it was hilarious. I thought this was brilliant. There's a lot of points in this episode where I genuinely laughed out loud at yeah, stuff. And, very and I was funny. like, this is X-Files. How does this happen? Like Very this... different take yeah, on it. Yeah. But I will say this throughout this episode. Um, I mean, I, I sort of knew this already, but this episode really showcases it. Mulder, or David Duchovny, his comedy timing is exceptional. Yeah. He, he, if he wants to, and I don't know whether he does, I don't know what else he's done in, in, in his life, I haven't looked in, in, in too much into his work, but if he wanted to do a, a comedy show, he would, mm. not, an, not an issue, because he is fantastic. Californication, a comedy show. I never really watched that. I never I, watched I saw, it either. I saw no. adverts for it, but I... Is, is Duchovny in that? Yeah, he's like the main character in that. Oh, part, okay. I don't know what it is, to be no, honest. No, I don't either. I assumed it was a comedy, but again, yeah, no, it might be completely wrong with that. I, just, I, I was very impressed. Yeah, very, very yeah, impressed really with, 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 with him in general in this yeah. episode. And Scully. Scully has some good she does. moments she, as well. She does. She does one thing that really shocked me. But I, I gasped. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We will, we will get to that. Yeah, we we'll need to stop for, for, for shadowing. Let's just get to I it. Th- yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. So we're, we're then in Phil's diner as Mulder Scully and Sheriff Hamilton uh, sit at the table. Uh, they're discussing the deceased uh, and the sheriff says that he was a great escape artist and that was his trick, basically. He says um, that his skin condition, unfortunately, held him back. He said that he'd probably be doing Vegas uh, if it wasn't for that. Um and Scully says that she didn't know that sideshows still existed, um, to which the sheriff says there are about two or three left. Uh, and I mean, do they still exist now? You, you would assume so, because this is 95, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, I I just assumed that was, honestly, I assumed it was like a 1920s thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um, step step forward, step forward, yeah. and come and see the, the bearded lady or something yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. It just doesn't seem like a modern day thing. But yeah, especially these these days, it's it's quite, everything's a lot more... Um, accepting and stuff like that. Not you don't tend to unless you're watching a Channel Five documentary. You don't tend to gawk <laughs> at like deformities and stuff. No, like exactly. That, yeah, I mean, I, even like even if you went went to like circuses now, like traveling yeah. circuses, they're nothing like what they used to be. It's more gymnastics and stuff. Yeah, like that, yeah, it? yeah. You, you don't get like I mean, there's there's better like any used to be like sort of animals and stuff like that, and that's all just not acceptable anymore. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, interesting, but I I, I assume that the, yeah. I'm guessing somewhere in the world there is. So got, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And I suppose there's that argument. Well, it's providing work for people who might find work hard to come by. True. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I know it's not right, but like, for example, the, the crocodile, got, the yeah. crocodile man, mm-hmm. he is going to be prejudiced against. That uh, people are going to be prejudiced against him. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know. Even Lanny says <laughs> later on in the episode that <laughs> that job of being a, in, a, in a sideshow was his best job that he ever had. Yeah. Uh, and we'll, 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 yeah, we'll get to this. <laughs> we'll get to this because he has a really, he has a perfect line about that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so we find out um, that uh, a few of the sideshow uh, performers uh, live in this town. Um, 
and it's like a caravan park, isn't yeah, it? It's not yeah, really a town. It's yeah. like a, I suppose it, it is just like a pick up and go type thing. Yeah, so yeah, sort of like a, a not a shanty town because they're sort of no. I think it literally is like a caravan site. Yeah, caravan site. Yeah, yeah. Um, Scully uh, starts thinking about a theory or starts uh, telling about a theory that um, the town's history might have spurned on this murderer. Um, that they're traveling uh, and seeing the world, but they're isolated from uh, from society, um, and that's what could be a motive for this murderer. But the sheriff seems to get offended at this uh, when she says um, they're deformed, and he he says that they prefer or they're referred to as very special people. Yeah, is the term that he refers to. So maybe that's what we should use. Yeah, uh, going forward in this episode. Um, he says they're normal, just as anyone else. And, and Scully says to this that most serial killers appear normal. Uh, he says, um, so if they are normal, then we have to assume that they're capable of committing the same crimes. Which is a fair point, I guess. But right? I think what he says next is, yeah. is an even fairer point, which is basically, he turns around and says, to be honest, it's other people that have yeah. difficulties um, accepting their disabilities. Yeah, exactly. Then... They, they do, yeah. So, yeah. And, and I completely understand that yeah. point of view. So, yeah. but to be fair, again, look at it's. I love doing this. Is why I love doing this podcast because you can go back through it and things you didn't pick up on the mm. time as you're reading through it again and you're going through it, you sort of pick it up again. And of course, he's touchy because mm. of what we learn, find right, out about yeah. him later. Like yeah. he, the reason why he's so protective over the is because he's he's part of them. It is, yeah. So yeah, it, it's exactly. very interesting and and. Uh, on that point as well about uh, Scully saying that this entire episode does not paint uh, Mulder and Scully as the in the best light you know what I mean like, yeah. they, they themselves show off some of their like prejudices and stuff like that so again they might be they're looking at it as the normal world looking down on that, that world as well yeah, so, yeah to, to, an extent, to an extent I, th- yeah. I think Scully um, is portrayed as I don't know the most I think she's like the most accepting person mm in the show at this yeah, point because yeah. like she just doesn't look she looks past a, a, any sort of abnormality I want to say yeah, but yeah. you know something that's a little bit different mm. she looks past it yeah, um, yeah. all the time and constantly so yeah, um, yeah you, you see both sides of it um, Mulder then um, reveals a picture that he's got um, and shows it to the, the sheriff and the sheriff says that that's from a Hepcat, Hepcat Helm there was a Difficult word to say then. <laughs> um, yeah, he says it's from Hepcat Helm. Um, and he says that he lives right behind his station. So then we go uh, to his workshop. And the first thing that we see is this rubber head. Yeah. It's basically bloody. Uh, it's on a spike. And we hear this screaming Jay Hawkins song playing. Um, he sat at his, uh, Hep- Hepcat sat at his desk um, as they all walk in. Um, and he has straight away, who are the rubes? <laughs> um, the sheriff basically explains that Hepcat operates the uh, Carnival Funhouse. And Hepcat gets really annoyed by this description. Yeah. He says that you don't come here to have fun. You come here to get the hell scared out of you. So, yeah, he's quite defensive of his work. He even calls it a tabernacle of terror. Yeah. And the sheriff just turns around, it's a fun house. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can tell that he he's quite... No nonsense, he'll describe yeah. it as it is, so yeah. Um, and this is where Mulder shows this drawing again, shows it to Hepcat, and Hepcat says that that is a Fiji mermaid. Mm. I, I've never heard of this no, before. No, I don't even know. It, it, it could, is it possibly that it's original? Um, possibly. Tell I'm you what, sure. when you come on the show and I'll have a quick look. Yeah. Um, and Hepcat says that it was basically, uh, after the crowds went in to sort of see what it was, they found, they found out it was a mummified monkey with a fish tail sewn onto it. This is in the Barnum and Bailey show. Yeah, so this is where he explains that it was from. Uh, it was a P.T. Barnum. Oh um, yes, we know it. Uh, yeah. That definitely happened. Yeah, to be yeah. fair, I don't think the actual F- Fiji mermaid was no. considered like an actual animal. No, no. But yeah, he says it's P- uh, a P.T. Barnum um, show. Now it took which, me- if you have a look at, it's it's quite horrifying. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Um, it took me five minutes after he said P.E. Barnum to figure out who he meant. Because I was like, that name sounds familiar. Where have I heard that before? And about five minutes after that moment, I was like, Hugh Jackman? He means Hugh Jackman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I well, not it doesn't mean who not Hugh Jackman, Jackman himself. It means, but he means Barnum and Bailey. Yeah, so I, I completely, I, I f- completely forgot that um, the Greatest Showman is about this yeah. guy who's now been mentioned in X Files. I was like, what a world! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't even believe it. I I knew I knew instantly. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be fair, Luke, you should too. Why is that? Because we went on a school trip once. Did we? Yeah, to a place called Industry Hall. And Did when we? we're yeah, you remember Industry Hall, don't you? I think so. So anyway, at this school trip, you choose what you wanted to do there. Yeah. You could either do music or art or drama, and I think you did music. Do you not remember? I remember doing music. Yeah. So yeah, you did music, and then I I went for drama. And I actually played Barnum in the play at the end of the um because you like spent three days there and then at the end you performed to everybody and you performed a song to everybody. Was this in secondary school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember going to Industry Hall in secondary was it, school. Was it called Industry Hall? I don't remember. You 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 wrote the um, I mean this this is off. You wrote the Viridian City song. Oh. Was that in secondary school? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was primary. No, no, no. no. Um, you was childish for your uh, age. Okay. <laughs> All right. <Jeez. laughs> um, where's P.T. Barnum coming to that? I don't remember. This Did stuff. I play Barnum? Did you? Yeah, in, in, the, sh- in the show. <laughs> Sorry. And I played him, and I did an excellent job. Yeah. Do you not remember? So, like... Um, the, the police start coming in and they did yeah. the spotlight thing and I had to do the, all the roles on the floor. Oh, I remember the you roles. Remember, you remember the performance? I don't remember you were P.E. Barnum at all. I was a great Barnum. So I remember I you now. rolling around on the floor. <laughs> That's all you took from me. Not my, not my captivating performance. Uh, I don't remember much from Ingus Real, to be honest. Apart from writing a terrible rip-off of a Pokemon song. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, that's yeah. A, yeah. So that's how I that's how I knew Barnum because I used to I used to play him. Um, I played him once in a play. <laughs> you and Hugh Jackman, Birds of a Feather. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. So it took me five minutes to realize who this person was. Anyway, um. And this is where we get the name of the the title from because his name was P. E. Humbug Barnum, wasn't it, or something like that, Barnum Humbug. Um, I'm not. Name. I'm not sure. Humbug, I know, re- refers to um, a trick that's fake. Oh, okay, right. So, like, like the Fiji mermaid. Okay, was well, that a, a a gaff that he calls there, like a fake? Oh yeah, he does. He does mention what the humbug means. Yeah, I'm I've, sure. I'm, I'm sure I'm that was his name. We but should, anyway, we should do more yeah. thorough research. Anyway. <laughs> I thought I did, but you <laughs> Sorry. Threw a spanner in that way. I will just research. <laughs> oh my god, the amount of research I've done. I know, yeah. You're burning up your battery. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll move on as, as you're looking for that. Um, Hepcat says that Barnum was a genius um, because he basically um, started perpetuating this idea that maybe this Fiji mermaid was a fake, but there was potentially a real one. Yeah. Um, so you didn't know where the truth ends. Oh yeah, he does, and he says the humbug begins. Yeah, I so the uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. basically, I've just read it's uh, it's humbug's not his name. Oh, right. Barnum basically he was called the Prince of Humbug, oh, okay. um, and he had no problem as an as a performer tricking the audience, right? Because right. that was he he saw it as rather than giving the audience a sort of wonder to look at, yeah. he was giving them a wonder to look at by giving them a trick. Yeah. If they believed it, it's a wonder. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's why. I like this scene because it was very interesting because they imply that um, Barnum eventually had to admit because it was it looked so ridiculous this mm. Fiji mermaid that Barnum had to admit that um, it was a fake mm. they they sewed a monkey onto a fish mm. a dead monkey onto a fish um, but then this guy suggests that well because he was so public about it maybe that was what drove the audience in because he wanted mm. to see this monkey sewed onto a fish. Yeah. But it was actually a Fiji mermaid that yeah. he found. And it was it is interesting. Yeah. I mean, you, that's what he means. You never know where the trick ends. Yeah. It, it, it's all, it, With Barnum's mind, he was so clever that he just... It was always... You had to be on your toes, basically. I thought he just sang. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> you, you needed to watch my performance. You <laughs> rolled around a lot as well. Yeah, that's true. He did, yeah. Um, Hepcat believes that the mermaid is is real. Um, Mulder's eyes light up. As, as soon as he says this, his eyes light up. Um, and Mulder then shows uh, them a picture of, of tracks found near the crime scene. And he says that they defy identification. We can see them. And they sort of just look like a trail, I guess. Mm. Like something's dragged itself, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and they also believe that they might be simian in nature. So again, this monkey sewed onto a, onto a fish sort of makes a lot of sense here. And the sheriff at this point is is quite um, adamant that this isn't isn't real. Yeah, he sort of doesn't understand why they believe this. And again, it's another form of diverting our expectations because he plays the straight man throughout this. Yeah, exactly. And then at the end, sort of twists on its head. Yeah, exactly. When we find out more about him. Um, I love the ending of this part as well because uh, Scully says, do you recall what Barnum said about suckers and look directly at Mulder? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the subtle sort of jabs that yeah. they have in this episode against one another. Um, Mulder has a perfect one <laughs> towards the end as well. Um, anyway, we move on to the next scene and we're at the Gulf Breeze trailer court. Um, the proprietor, Mr. Nutt, I can't say that. <laughs> this, this is from the script, so I'm not saying that. What's it say? It says, is a midget. <laughs> That's not and, right. That's not but that might, I think that was the accepted term. I know, I know. It's, day. Just, it's a yeah. weird one. Um, so he climbs up a step ladder, uh, puts, puts it down on the desk in front of the two agents, says he's got this book, basically. And he's also got a little dog as well with him. Um, now, first off, as soon as I saw this guy, I was like, it's... it's um, the guy from Twin Peaks, and I was like, they finally reunited him and Duchovny. Oh, I don't know, yeah. In Twin Peaks, there's a character who only appears in, there's a, there's a sort of dream type sequence mm. in it called The Red Room, and he's always in there, and he talks backwards. Okay. Like, they record, he recorded his lines, he performed them backwards, and then they just reversed the audio. Okay, so, yeah. so it's in English, but it's all really weird yeah yeah um, but anyway that's for Twin Peaks podcast <laughs> um, but yeah I, I was quite happy that these two got reunited in a in a different role I guess interesting yeah he plays a very different character um, Mulder asks uh, if he's done much circus work <laughs> <laughs> and Nut is so offended by yeah, this yeah he's, he's, this is a weird question to ask yeah, like, straight off straight off I mean? yeah um, and he goes off Goes off on one basically sort of saying, do you not believe that he has the, the credentials to get, and he basically gets his degree in hotel management. Yeah. So he's legit. Uh, you know, he doesn't need, doesn't need this shit basically from yeah. Mulder. Mulder apologizes and says he's sorry. And <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> to, which, to which then Nut says, he's prejudged Nut, but Nut has also prejudged him. He says, Mold, uh, because that's human nature. Um, and he says, uh, he can deduce that Mulder is working for the government based on his. Um, he takes a pop at his head, yeah, his bland tie. suit, his yeah. bland hair, and his everything. Tie. Yeah. Um, Probably the FBI he says. Yeah, he says he just he's judged him as a caricature instead of a unique human being. And then, and he's, Mul- like, and then he's like, he's like, how does that feel? How does yeah. that feel to be judged? Yeah. <laughs> and then Mulder says, "But I am FBI." <laughs> <laughs> and he just looks like defeat on yeah. his face. <laughs> Yeah, Nut loses his patience at this and just basically tells them to just register. And yeah, so good. good. So good. Um, we then see they're both being led down uh, this trailer park by uh, a man named Lanny. Um, and this is the guy that we saw earlier who was drinking who had the uh, the person attached to him. Uh, and he's explaining that he worked for the circus for most of his life. Um, they asked if uh, he was bothered by people staring at him. And he says, no, it was the best work he's ever had. He used to just well, he got paid for standing there. Yeah. He explains what his routine was, uh, how he would say that his brother's shy. Um, but then uh, he says that they asked him why he quit and basically he said that Mr. Nutt convinced him that he um, doing this work lacked dignity. To which he then says, now he carries around other people's luggage. Yeah, it puts so, into perspective, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, because it's sort of saying, well... He liked that job, whether, yeah. you, whether you think it had dignity or not. He loved it. it. That's his truth to make. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, it's sort of flipping it on its head of like, is this wrong if you actually want to do it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of the performers in this that they sort of go through that seem to enjoy what they do. And doing. see it as a craft or an yeah, art. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's some of the skills on there that you just go, whoa, that's, that's, I don't know if that's an art, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, Mulder tips um, Lanny um, as they as he's leaving, <laughs> and as he's leaving, he says, uh, "Sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite." And then he sort of 
jumps through hoops to try and explain <laughs> that there's not bed bugs in it. You can tell he's quite an awkward human being. Yeah, um, yeah. And Scully asks uh, at this point, as, after he, Lanny's left, uh, Scully asks, what is all this stuff about the Fiji mermaid? She doesn't believe it, basically. Um, and she tells him not to let the nature of this town distort his list of suspects after he says that basically we should not discount any suspects. Yeah. Lanny, I, I just only just thought about it now, he, he's Reminds me of somebody. Lanny's quite a famous actor. He's in a lot of things. What um, have I seen him in? He was was in, he in Prison Break? I don't know if he was in Prison Break. Oh, he's in Ghost. That's what I've seen him in. Yeah, he's in Ghost. Ghost. He's in um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. He's in, he's in Tomorrow Never Dies. <laughs> An interesting Bond film. Interesting, okay. Um, this is an aside. The cast of Tomorrow Never Dies is amazing. It's such a <laughs> shit film. <laughs> I loved it as a kid, but I rewatched it recently. I was like, what is this yeah. blank? <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, we then cut to Hepcat Helms' workshop, and he's still listening to the same song. He, he loves this Screaming Jay Hawkins song. Um, to be fair, he's got some good hits. Screaming Jay Hawkins has. has he? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's got a spell on you. Put a spell on you. That was his. So. <laughs> Did you do it wrong? Yeah, I got it wrong. <laughs> I got it <sighs> anyway, he's playing the song, and he's painting this mask. He walks over to a desk, uh, and as he's wiping his hands uh, whilst working on this, we see in the reflection of the glass, there's this thing that we saw from earlier, sort of in the window. We have a bit of a better look at it now, don't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, it's sort of this... Di- it does look like a, a Fiji mermaid, yeah, basically. Yeah, it does, yeah. Um, he stands up uh, and um, moves away again, and the classic horror film thing where the monster's now gone. Same monster. Yeah, that's what it says. In the, that's what it says in the script. I'm reading it here. Don't don't at me. Um, so then, uh, yeah, he goes over to another part um, of the of the workshop, uh, and then he sort of looks over, and we see in another reflection this thing crawling towards him, all blurred and distorted. And this is when it jumps at him, and he screams as this creature sort of attacks him. Yeah, uh, and then we fade to black. Um, we then cut back to the uh, the Gulf Breeze trailer park, um, and uh, this is in the morning now. Uh, Mulder's going for his jog, and he sort of stops uh, on the road and looks over to the lake as we see a half-naked man running out of the water who's just wearing a line cloth, and he is covered head to toe in tattoos of puzzle pieces, blue yeah. puzzle pieces. I'd seen this man before, and I didn't realise where, where I'd seen him with. I think... I'm. Pretty sure I saw him in like an episode of Ripley's Believe It or Not. Is he yeah. actually tattooed? This is real. No way. This is real. No way. Yeah. His, oh my god. His real name. Uh, this is all in the production notes, but his real yeah. name is the Enigma, which is quite funny because his name in this is the Conundrum. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's had a lot more done lately. I did not know that. Okay, interesting. Um. So yeah, uh, he's running out of this uh, lake. Um. And he sort of crouches down, and then we see this sort of weird, like, sort of shot angle uh, of him chewing on this fish. Yeah, like a real uh, close-up uh, as well. It's a, it looked like... Um, have you ever seen that film? Oh, what's it called now? It's a Michelle Gondry film, I think. Gummo. Have you ever seen Gummo? I can't or, like, shots have. from that. It looks like that. It's like a really weird... Shot, yeah, sort of it's like a film. fish islands almost, yeah, isn't it? yeah, that's ironic, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they sort of we get this weird shot of, of this guy chewing on a, a raw or live fish, I'm yeah. not sure really at this point, but anyway, Mulder's watching him, he looks over, uh, at Mulder, throws down the fish, and then runs off, yeah. again. Well, what a crazy town this is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you see a lot here. Um, we then see in uh, Scully's trailer. Um, it's seven fifteen, and uh, Scully sort of wakes up, and uh, she looks out the window and sees a man <laughs> seemingly fall from a roof. <laughs> it's so mad. Yeah. Um, she sort of sits up, looks outside, and sees that there are actually people practicing on trampoline. Yeah. Um, we see all, all other different stunts going on outside as well, and then we hear a, a, a knocking on the door. It's quite frantic. Um, and uh, she sort of pulls on her robe and opens the door, and it's Lanny. You, this is a beautifully shot scene. Yeah. Um, Lanny says that the sheriff wants to see him, 
And then as soon as that's said, they both get an eyeful of one another, <laughs> quite frankly. Yeah, yeah. so Lai looks t- so Scully looks down first and sees um because his robe's slightly yeah, open yeah. and sees um Leonard is his brother, I think. Is that it? his that's, brother? That's, his, that's bro- what it's called, yeah, his yeah. brother growing from his body. Yeah. Um and then it's sh- it's cut back to him and he's looking down because Scully's slightly open and yeah. she's got her breast slightly yeah. out. Yeah. And then they both look at each other in the eye and both cover, cover up, up instantly. Yeah. <laughs> um and then it gets to a bit more serious talk and he says that there's been another murder. Mm. Um we cut to Hepcat Helm's workshop again and uh the sheriff is standing over uh Helm's body. He's writing something down. Uh Scully's kneeling down as well, and Mulder's looking up at the windows and he points out that there's blood on the windows and he says that they should send this to the lab for investigation. Scully points out, well, why do we need to test for the victim's blood? And he points out that it's actually on the other window and it's on the outside. Um, and they sort of qu- quiz why there would be blood on the outside. And the sheriff also says, why wouldn't they just come in through the front door? It was open. Mm. And he says you would need to be a contortionist to uh, get through that window. Anyway, we uh, which you would imagine there's no short supply of in that oh, area. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the list of suspects is quite high. Um, we then cut to uh, back to the the trailer park, and we see Doctor Block Blockhead suspended over what looks like a, a vat of hot water. Yeah, it's a boiling a... pot, isn't it? Yeah, um, it seems boiling. Yeah, <laughs> um, and he's in a straight jacket, uh, trying to unbuckle. Um, these straps while Mulder and Scully walk over. Um, he does this in time and um, sort of gets the jacket off and he asks, how many people do you know who can uh, get out of this jacket in under three minutes? And Scully says, fortunately none. <laughs> um, they say that they saw his spike trick um, at, the, at the funeral to which he takes umbrage with and says he does not perform tricks. He shows and he shows off his skills by hammering a, no, a nail into his nose. Yeah. Oh. Um, Scully then says that maybe he's one of those people um, who uh, whose nerve endings don't register pain, and this is why he can do the things he can do. And he discredits that. Um, and Mulder asks if he's ever tried this trick, the the nail trick, on anyone else. And he sort of laughs at this and says that if uh, he tells his audiences that if audiences that if they tried this. They would get a slight lobotomy, which I don't discount that at all. Yeah. Um, Mulder starts helping him. Um, it goes back. Sorry to interrupt. It goes back to the point though that he sees this as a craft. Yeah, yeah. He's not. He's not into cheap tricks. He's yeah. he's training his body to do what it is. Yeah. Because later on, we can see he's actually nailing it into. It's not a trick. He's yeah. nailing it into his skull. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Um, Mulder helps him get this nail out as he starts re- recounting his story. And again, I'll read this verbatim. This guy is his quotes and and everything it, it is just perfect. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. He's, he's the showman for out. Yeah. Um, he says, starting in my homeland of Yemen, I studied with yogis, fakirs, and swamis, learning the ancient arts of body manipulation. But most men know nothing of these arts. For instance, did you know that through the protective Chinese practice practice of Tai Bu Shan? Uh, you can train your testicles to draw up into your ad- abdomen. Uh, and Mulder explains that that's exactly what he's doing right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> and at this point, the, the man that we saw earlier, the puzzle man, uh, as he's pulled the nail out, pops out of the vat. Yeah. Was he boiling? Like, what, what's going on there? I'm, I'm so confused. Um, and Mulder says that um, this is the guy that he saw earlier in the, uh, earlier in the day, uh, eating a fish in the river. And Blockhead says... Oh, well, he shouldn't be doing that. He knows how mid-show snacks ruin his appetite. Yeah, so basically his yeah. trick is eating Think. anything and everything. That's what he does. Yeah. Um, Mulder says that maybe it was just another tattooed, bald, naked man. <laughs> um, and he explains that this, this man is called the Conundrum, and he's something called a geek, which, yeah, as you mentioned, eats anything. Uh, Scully asks if he's ever eaten human flesh. And Blockhead says that's a question only he can answer, um, but he doesn't answer any questions, only poses them. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, as soon as he finishes this, he pours live crickets directly into his mouth as yeah. he starts crunching on them. As if that wasn't enough, 
He then offers Scully a cricket. I love this. I love it. She, without hesitation, takes one and what we believe yeah. eats it. Yeah. Just, was, and it's like a big, the biggest yeah. finger to them, like yeah. thinking she wouldn't do it. Bang. She yeah. just goes in and yeah, I'll have one. Yeah. I was fla- I was like, what is yeah. going on <laughs> in this episode? Um, they walk away and Mulder is as perplexed as we are at this. He's sort of open mouthed staring at her. And she then reaches behind Mulder's ear and reveals this same cricket. Uh, and she explains that her, her uncle taught her a sleight of hand tricks uh, and says he was he was better than these two were. Um, and Mulder, sort of now <laughs> collecting himself, says he's going to head to the lab and test the blood uh, against the blood that he has on. And then he reveals the nail that he'd sort of swiped from uh, yeah. Blockhead. I put Jim's nail, but that's giving away the guy's real name. <laughs> Get that. Um, and he says that ev- everyone's uncle must have been an amateur magician. Um, yeah, both came to the spirits of the uh, on the yeah, side yeah. show. I, I love um, this sort of, even though it's quite a, a serious, well, it's not a serious one, but it is a murder case that they're investigating. The comedy and the like fun of it is through it. That's, and that's the key. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, it, it, I don't think it's, it's not meant to be taken seriously. No, definitely not. Uh, and I think that's where it shines, to be honest. Yeah, because yeah. it's so different yeah. and it's unique and it, as a one-off story, yeah. it's great. Um, we're then in Gibsonton Museum of Curios. Um, Scully walks in and she's looking around this sort of museum, I guess, of, of these different sideshow acts. Uh, and she looks at a picture of um, conjoined twins um, and there's all these different stuff in there and we see that these twins were called Chang and Eng um, and this is where the curator walks out from behind her and he, he welcomes her she asks about um, Eng and Chang and he explains um, a bit about their, their act and she asks about their death was that special and he says oh very much so on a cold January eve in 1874 Eng awoke to find his brother had passed away during the course of the night. A few hours later, Eng himself departed from the world. Now, these facts themselves may be less than fascinating, but imagine, imagine being Eng and lying there, knowing that essentially half your body was now dead, that the rest that is must, scary, isn't that it? The rest must inevitably follow, and being able to do absolutely nothing. At the autopsy, it was officially concluded that Chang died of a cerebral hemorrhage. Yeah, sorry, I just grabbed the entire speech. Yeah. This guy has some, uh, again, for this entire episode, there's so many like bits of dialogue that just, just take them out. Yeah, just really them. impactful. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know, yeah, like, as you said, it's t- terrible because it's essentially, you know, you're next. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I, I can't even begin to imagine. Mm. And not only that, you've lost a brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's like mourning for yourself yeah. almost. So double strange. whammy, yeah. <coughs> um, Scully starts asking about Blockhead and Geek Axe uh, and he goes on to explain that Blockheads are skilled performers but Geeks are neither skilled nor um, I, f- I forgot the word he uses but basically sort of says that Geeks are sort of they just eat things yeah yeah. yeah he's, he's basically they're not a trick and he says that they don't even atten- uh, attain the levels of a gaff and we he, and Scully asks what these are and we basically find out that they're fakes. Um, he shows the example of two conjoined twins who um, didn't look sim- uh, didn't look identical as uh, conjoined yeah. twins always are. And she asks about if the Fiji mermaid mermaid could be a gaff. And he sort of laughs and says uh, he says that he uh, knows that they're investigating the alligator man's death. And he says that he has something of interest. Uh, he gives her a leaflet about something called the dog faced man. Um, and he says that he also has a P.T. Barnum original, which he's willing to show her. And he tells her that he, uh, under two conditions that she tells no soul what she sees and that she donates an extra five dollars. <laughs> um, yeah, she don't had to be, I, I skipped that part, but basically had to donate some money to come in because it said freaks free, uh, others donations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically. Um, so she goes into this sort of long, dark corridor we see in the center of it is this ornate chest. It's green, gold. We're wondering what's inside. Yeah. She opens it and it's empty. And that, that as soon as she finds this out, a door opens and reveals exit. Yeah. <laughs> She's been done. <laughs> um, that, that's the gaff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like how it shows that uh, it's still there's all these like carnival style tricks. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? E- even amongst all these like acts and yeah. whatnot. 
Um, we're then back at Scully's trailer, and uh, Mulder's sort of um, coming to see Scully, and he starts hearing this clanking and groaning under the trailer. Talking <laughs> of laugh at moments, this bit got me. <laughs> um, he looks under and sees this small figure basically moving underneath, so he, he pulls his gun, kneels down, and finds that it's Mr. Nut, yeah. and he's crawling underneath. And um, Mulder sort of asks what he was doing. Uh, Takes offence again. <laughs> yeah, and he says that he was repairing the plumbing, not as <laughs> what Mulder is presuming. In He says it in more extravagant words, but basically he's trying to perv on, yeah. on Scully. Uh, he says, I was merely repairing the plumbing on this unit. I know what you're thinking, my friend, but you're grossly mistaken. Just because I am not of so-called average height does not mean I must receive my thrills vicariously. Not all women attracted to overly tall, lanky men such as yourself. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many men, uh, how many women, and spoiling the joke there, uh, find my size intriguingly alluring. And then Mulder sort of pauses and says, "You'd be surprised how many men do as well." <laughs> to which Mister Nuts not happy about this no. and sort of sort of <laughs> runs away. Um, I did quite like that. Uh, I don't know why Mulder's got such a thing against Mister Nut. Like yeah, he's just yeah. what's his, what's his problem? <laughs> he's just yeah. out to annoy him. I get the feeling he's just trying to wind him up. Yeah, that's it. He's just <laughs> being a wind up merchant. Yeah, yeah. Mulder sees some footprints outside and st- uh, starts like sizing them up, basically um, with his with his own foot. And this is when Scully pops her head out of the trailer and she asks if Mister Nut's finished fixing the. Uh, the plumbing. <laughs> he was just doing his job. That's all he was doing. Yeah, no, I didn't think anything less. I did quite find it was quite funny how she just popped her head out and then just yeah, yeah again, just more good comic timing. Yeah, it, it was. was. But it get, and I felt I felt like these two enjoyed this performance. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because yeah. they could just they could bounce off each other a lot more. Um, inside, uh, Mulder's explaining about the blood um, matching, uh, but he says that it's that they're both O positive, which from what I can what I know roughly about blood is no positive one where it's hard to match up because it can like sort of it's got more similarities to it, both type it, of bloods yeah basically like I think so so it's sort of again hard to sort of say I think no positive is the most common type of blood isn't it I thought it was quite is O positive common or is O negative the, the hard one to find isn't it I think it's A and B the, the hard one I'm not sure I'm, yeah I'm, I don't know about that nonsense yeah. if you're a doctor or you're skilled in, <laughs> in bloods I don't know if you're a vampire or something get in touch <laughs> Um, he says that he's checked out Blockhead, uh, and he's found out that his real name is Jeffrey Swain, and he's not born in Yemen, he was born in Milwaukee. Mmm. And I have just found out that O positive is the most common blood type. Oh, is it? With okay. 38%. Ah, uh, so it's... And then you get into A, B, and then A, B. Ah, okay. A, B negative is the, is the, the, the one percenter. Uh, okay. Do you know what blood type you are? Yeah, O positive. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have no idea. Have you ever given blood? No. They give you a band. If you give blood away, it uh, keeps... So basically, like, if you ever got into an accident, they know straight away what blood type you were, so they, they could help out. I've, I mean, I've t- had bloods taken, so I'm sure if I had, like, test results, they'd probably say... What yeah, they'd be on a doctor's record somewhere, yeah. yeah. Just, you never never check, really, do you? No. Know, I but anyway. <laughs> he also says that Dr. Blockhead does not hold a doctorate. Which I thought was quite a funny line. Um... Scully says that she did a check on an orphan who was found in the woods of Albania in 1943. Although physically adept at catching his own food, he could not speak a word save for a few savage grunts. Brought to this country, he was exhibited behind a lock cage, necessitated by his feral ferocity, where he would terrify onlookers by devouring chunks of raw meat. However, for reasons I could not ascertain, he ran away from the circus and spent a vague number of years mysteriously roaming about, supporting himself through the number of nondescript jobs. Eventually, he wound up up in Gibsonton, where he took up a career in law enforcement and has spent the past four years serving as a sheriff. Yeah. This is where we find out that Sheriff Hamilton used to be Jim Jim, the dog-faced boy. (laughs) Of course. Of course. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, nothing... Like surprises me in this episode. No, no, yeah. no. It it was it, it was great, and again, yeah. it explains why he's so defensive. Mm-hmm. Explains why he was so involved right from the beginning. Yeah, it's just really interesting, and it yeah. does set up a, a couple of good plot points. Yeah, especially this next scene. Yeah, uh, with now at Sheriff Hamilton's house, and Hamilton is digging a hole in uh, his front yard, 
and Mulder and Scully are watching him from the bushes. Sort of a role reversal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and Hamilton looks up and we see a full moon. He that's then cuts something. Initially, I thought it was his hand. Um, rubs it in and then throw, rubs it into his hands and then throws it into the hole. And he uh, he covers the hole back up again and walks away and walks inside, should I say. Um, Mulder and Scully wait till he's gone and then they start. They walk over to this hole and start to dig it up. Um, Mulder's digging it up with a shovel while Scully's looking out, basically. And they sort of stop and whisper to one another and Mulder says, hypertrichosis, which is the uh, growth, uh, of, like hair growth on your face yeah. and stuff like that, does not connote lycanthropy, which is being a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he says they've been really discriminatory uh, yeah. here. And Scully sort of brings up the point that it's sort of like judging it's... people based on the colour of their skin. Yeah, there's no, it's no difference. Yeah. Like, you, you're making a snap judgement based on their appearance. And then they continue anyway. Yeah. And, and they, they just carry on of, they sort of, Yeah, they sort of pause for about two seconds and then carry on. At this point, as they're digging, the sheriff then comes out, turns a light at them, and they ask them what they're doing as they then realise what he's buried and Morda says they're exhuming his potato. <laughs> love how he just goes right around the yeah. right around the world just to try and explain yeah. himself. And then Scully just like, nah, I'm just gonna tell him. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the next part yeah, Scully tries to spin Oh uh, that so it was yeah. the opposite way yeah. around, yeah, sorry. S- Scully Scully tries to spin that some killers have uh, obsessions with police uh, and can end up as police and Mulder basically blabs and says yeah. that he found that they were dog face. He was a dog face boy. Yeah, um, <laughs> the whole truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> um, he then gives him this picture, uh, and the sheriff says, "Look at Skinner. Look back then." Yeah, he's and, fine with yeah, it. As we see this picture of a, a, a hair covered man. Um, and he explains that he spent half of his life as Jim Jim, uh, and then one day um, woke up with a bald spot uh, and realised that he was not only losing his hair, but also his career. Um, he says that the rest of his body is still hairy, though, uh, and that's why he doesn't go to the beach. Yeah. I mean, it, to be fair, just, well, they, they don't make any attempt to make him look like he was a, a dog-faced boy, or whatever yeah, you yeah. like call him. Like, he's literally just a bald man, isn't yeah. he? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. But yeah, so uh, unless he's just like completely like an ape underneath yeah. his, um, his uniform. I mean, we never know. Yeah, we don't. We don't see that. That's what we need. More, more Jim Jim. More Jim Jim. A I spin-off want. series. Yeah, more Jim Jim. <laughs> the Adventures um, of Jim Jim, the dog face cop. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. That sounds like some kind of Kickstarter series. Or something like that. Um, It'd be great because anyone could play him as well. We wouldn't need the original. That's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, they ask him why he was burying a potato, and he says that he had warts on his hand. And they ask him again why he was he burying a potato, and he explains that if you slice a potato uh, and bury, uh, rub it into your hands, and then bury it under a full moon, then it gets rid of warts. Obviously, uh, it's just uh, he yeah. says it as so matter of factly, yeah. like like it's the most normal thing in the world. And, and that's the thing, like we we sort of seen all this like strangeness happening, but. Everyone has weird wives' tales, yeah, like, yeah, really, like strange stuff that they do. But yeah, um, and at this point, he sort of figures out and he says, uh, "The investigation isn't going too well, is it?" <laughs> and then they sort of look at one another as like, "No," <laughs> as they throw the potato back into the the, the hole in the ground. Um, we then cut to uh, the trailer park again, and <laughs> see the conundrum. Walk around with a piece of paper tucked into his little loin co- cloth, um, um, and the manager's dog starts barking at him, and then he proceeds to chase the dog as the dog runs away. I would if I was this dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this man will eat. Um, and he chases the dog as the dog runs through this little dog door, and the conundrum slides after it but misses it. Mister Nut opens the door, looks at him. And the conundrum sort of just hands him a piece of paper with um, uh, a skull pin on it. Um, Nut looks at it uh, and sort of closes the door on him. <laughs> and I wondered what this was for a brief second. I was like, what, what is he paying him for? 
it's the simplest thing in the world as he says why do the weirdos always pay their rent in advance yeah yeah <laughs> and we're like just oh, literally okay. paying to live <laughs> yeah yeah again looking at your you're instantly thinking this is some kind of or like something weird something yeah. weird going on and it's no no it's normal yeah. this is just a normal thing the dog starts barking at the door again and not basically says that he's got a gun and he's more than happy to use it as he thinks this is the conundrum on the other side again he looks through the peephole uh, and sees that nothing's there as he gets down a hand lunges at him through this dog door and grabs him and pulls him or tries to pull him through and he sort of braces himself yeah, he manages to kick away doesn't he yeah he kicks back and then we sort of see this sort of distorted like face lunge at the dog door and then we fade to black yeah we don't see what happens and, after and this. it strikes again yeah the yeah. Fiji mermaids this, the Fiji mermaids as we, as we think um the next scene, we see uh, a man with bloody hands um, unlocking Scully's door uh, while she's asleep. She sits up, um, points a gun, and it's Lanny. He puts his hands on her shoulders. Uh, he's, he's still got blood on them. And Lanny says, he's dead. Um, we then cut to uh, Mr. Nutt's trailer. Hamilton's pointing out the blood on the dog door again to, Sc- uh, to Scully. He says that all the doors were locked from the inside. And Lanny sort of agonized about this he says that nut was like a brother to him yeah. <laughs> again I, didn't, I wrote this down and now it's done i'm like oh okay yeah, yeah that, make, that makes sense and this time he says that not even a contortion contortionist could get through that dog door um and then we find out that nut um has this skull pin pierced into his hand um and lanny starts screaming and banging on the door um and the sheriff basically says it to calm him down, he's going to put him in the drunk tank. Occasionally, he gets like this. Yeah. Um, and again, we didn't think we don't think of anything else at this point. We just think he's just upset. Well, they uh, not only that because we know where the school pin came from. Yeah, yeah. We we know that it's not anything malicious, but of course, yeah, they have got the preconception that it's probably going to be um, either well, block, yeah, yeah. block, block it or the, or, um, the or conundrum, the conundrum. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, they say they're going to head uh, and take Blockhead into custody and Scully says that she expected this case to be a bit more and then Mulder says freakish <laughs> and he says you shouldn't complain about banality when the main suspect is a human Blockhead <laughs> that's a good point good point yeah. um, we then cut to uh, Blockhead's trailer and Blockhead is Attached to hundreds of hooks, which are sort of dug into his chest yeah. with wires out of them. Um, he's sort of tweaking them. And he's also sat on a bed of nails. <laughs> um, they knock on the door. They walk in. They say, we're here to... And then they sort of stop seeing what he's doing. <laughs> and he explains that this is a, uh, a variation on an American Indian sun dance ritual where they suspend themselves from hooks. And the pain becomes so unbearable that you leave your body. And he says that if people knew the true price of spirituality, there'd be a lot more atheists. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great line. Again, <laughs> just, so good. He, this guy is like, everything he says is just, it's either really well structured or just hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Um, they tell him that he's been taken into uh, to custody uh, in relation to these murders. Um, and he says he won't talk without his lawyer. And they ask who that is, and he says he represents himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they go to handcuff him, and he says, "What do you fascists? Uh, what gives you these you fascists the right to do this?" And Scully says, "Did we not mention that we were the FBI?" And as he say, as they say this, he says, "Did I not mention that I was an escape artist?" Escapes the handcuffs and pushes them both as he runs away. Uh, Mulder sort of falls and heads towards the bed of nails, yeah. which I thought he was going to dodge out the way or something. No, he just lands straight lands on them. Lands straight on them. And he says, it's more comfortable than a futon. <laughs> <laughs> and at this point, we see that the sheriff's at the door and he's got blockhead by the wires yeah. uh, as he's tugging on, <laughs> tugging on his chest. I like the bit where he pulls him forward and he just goes, how? <laughs> um, <laughs> we're then in the uh, police station and we see... Um, the uh, we see in the drunk tank that L- uh, Lanny's in there and he's sort of moaning and groaning. He's still got the blood on his hands. And he sort of rolls over and looks up at the ceiling and sort of he shouts a no and shrieks. Mm. And we think, oh, this things come to attack him. Yeah, now. yeah. 
Um, after this, it fades to black, and then we see Blockhead being led in, and he's basically saying that this is a, a miscarriage of justice, and it's it's all the makings of a sixty minute episode. Um, they ask if the check belonged to him, and he starts spouting about the Constitution. Basically, <laughs> um, when we start hearing Lanny groaning in, in the distance, they go to investigate, and they see Lanny in bed, and he looks dead at this point. He does look like yeah, he's been attacked, he's look, well, at least in. Not dead, like in you know, an unconscious state yeah, or something yeah. like that. Um, there's blood on the windowsill, and the sheriff asks, "How could anyone get in here?" And Scully says, "Maybe they. It was someone getting out." And she says that they need to find Leonard's. They need to find Leonard, Lanny's brother. They roll over Lanny, and we see that his twin, uh, his name no missing. No longer there. Yeah, Scully says that the twin can extract itself, basically. And Mulder, this is the this is a first. Mulder is skeptical of this. Yeah. <laughs> um, he says that it was just an appendage, uh, and uh, but Scully points out that the wound on the chest is similar, or that the wound where where, where it's come out come of out of, of one, yeah, is is similar to the other murder victims' wounds, basically. But she says that he's not bleeding, and the sheriff. Says this is silly as well, basically. He doesn't say it's silly, but you know, <laughs> this is silly. silly, silly. Uh, but he, he doubts this. Um, she says that um, maybe his twin is an anomaly that lets them disjoin. And Lanny at this point basically comes clean and he says, How could he turn him in without turning himself in? Yeah. Um, and Scully asks why he attacks others, uh, this being Leonard. And Lanny says he doesn't even think he knows that he's harming anyone. Yeah. Um, he says that he's just seeking another brother and he starts moaning and he's crying. He's proper heartbroken yeah, by yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he says um, it hurts not to be wanted um, and he doesn't know why he hated him. He's looked after him all his life and then he sort of thinks maybe that's why he hates him. He says that he can't survive outside long enough to understand that you cannot change the way that you were born, basically. And he says he'll come back. He always does. Um this one, I'll just sit and wait because he's gonna have to come back. Yeah, this way, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I had a theory at this point, mm-hmm. um, and I, I said, I said to myself, I was watching the episode, and I, I was enjoying it, and I said to myself, as a joke, huh, wouldn't it be funny if the conundrum ate him? <laughs> 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 like, he, the, yeah, but it's obviously just a joke. It's yeah. a silly just, little just joke a, that I was saying. Silly little. Theory. But I just want to put it out there. I had that thought, and I was like, that would be funny. What a funny way to end the episode. <laughs> Mulder says that Scully's the medical expert, uh, and he'll trust her on this, and he asks, how mo- mobile could Leonard be? She looks out the window, and we see this figure yeah, crawling off. Sc- scurrying. As the gate opens, uh, and they go chasing after it, and Blockhead uh, asks Lanny about his twin, uh, uh, and tries to find a bit more about it, and he just exclaims, what an act! <laughs> ever, ever the showman. Um, Mulder and Scully run out, and they enter this sort of cabin at the back. Now, yeah. I didn't know what this was initially, and then it sort of becomes a bit more apparent, yeah. especially what's been said. Mulder goes in, gun drawn, and he sees Leonard scurry round a corner. I love, I love the puppetry in this, yeah, because it's so corny, literally just bouncing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so corny and cheesy. But it fits Perfect. this episode perfectly. Again, it's not too serious. Yeah. But do you know what? It it's serious enough where you can believe that this is something they're investigating. But yeah, yeah it's still funny to watch. Um, Mulder gives chase and sort of reaches a dead end. We then see Scully also looking at another area of this this cabin. So yeah, she hears a noise, shouts freeze, and. Um, we see this skeleton with the fake head that we saw mm. Hepcat working on earlier fly towards her on this wire. So now we realise it's the fun house. Yeah, this is Hepcat's fun house. Um, Mulder says, uh, Mulder sees Leonard again uh, and chases after him, but sort of falls into yeah. a fake wall. <laughs> um, we then cut back to Scully and she's it's so slapstick. I know, yeah, scene. yeah, it's brilliant. I love at the end where they we'll get to it, yeah. but what they say. Um, Scully's in a hall of mirrors, and um, we hear a noise. Uh, she spins around and sees Leonard. We now see him in his full glory, yeah. basically. Um, and she pulls her gun and shoots at him. Uh, but we realise that this is a reflection, and uh, 
the mirror just shatters. Yeah. She looks around, doesn't see anything. She heads into another <laughs> corridor and walks straight into a mirror. Yeah. And um, but as she's walking down this corridor, we then see Mulder slide, slide out of a, sh- <laughs> a shoot in front of her. <laughs> and he just says, I thought I heard a shot. <laughs> um, and at this point, Scully's just like, I've had enough of this. She says, maybe we should try and catch him outside. <laughs> Um, this is where they head outside and they see him crawling towards the trees. They give chase, aim their guns, but then we just see Nut's dog basically yeah. barking. Uh, we then cut to the conundrum's trailer and he steps out to basically put the rubbish away. Yeah. Um, just a normal, normal day for the conundrum. Um, and this is where we see Leonard basically sneaking up behind him. It jumps and lunges itself at him as we hear screaming. This is where we think there's been another victim. Yeah. Mulder and Scully run over into this park, hear this screaming, uh, and they run over to his trailer, and they see him lying on the ground. He's he, fine. He looks fine. I mean, he looks a little, little, little bit bloated. A little but, bit, yeah. But, yeah, yeah he, looks, he looks fine. Um, Mulder goes to ask if he's seen a... And then sort of realises, how can I explain this? <laughs> uh, and just sort of runs away to try and look. Uh, and the conundrum wakes up now, and... He rubs his belly and yeah. smiles. <laughs> now, I, I didn't know at this point. I was like, has it injected itself into him? Or is it like... No, 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 no. And then it dawned on me towards the end. He and ate I was like, it. He ate it. He ate he it. He ate he the ate problem. He ate Lammy's brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, we then cut back to the uh, Gulf Breeze uh, trailer court uh, in the morning. And the sheriff's talking to a deputy. The Scully walks... Through the middle of the camp, the sheriff he's just had enough, and he asks Scully if they really saw this twin, or if it was the Fiji mermaid who swam all the way back to Fiji. Um, Mulder walks past at this moment and says, "Now you know how I feel." <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I just that line gave me a good yeah, chuckle as so well. So good. Um, we then see uh, Blockhead and the Conundrum packing up their car, and Scully walks over. And asks if they're leaving. Uh, and Blockhead says, definitely, we've that thing on the loose. Um, and Scully tries to reassure him that um, he can't last long um, uh, outside. And especially, as we've now find out, that Lanny has uh, died in the night. Yeah. And initially, you think, oh, it's because maybe it's been separated from his brother. No, he didn't die from his wounds. He had liver problems from his drinking, yeah. basically. Um and Blockhead sort of says, well, so there is a moral of the story. Lay off the booze. <laughs> <laughs> Scully says that after the autopsy, she uh, she's never seen anything like that. Um, the umbilical, there was umbilical sort of nature to to the, the sort of structure. Yeah, she, she says she'd never seen anything like it. And Blockhead says, and you never will again, 21st century genetic engineering will not only eradicate the Siamese twin and the alligator skin people, but you're going to be hard pressed to find a slight overbite or a not so high cheekbone. You see, I've I've seen the future, and the future looks just like him. As he then points to Mulder, so he points to Mulder, who is sort of stood in a model, sort of proud yeah. pose. One of his feet higher, yeah. one on step. Uh, <laughs> and he says, "Imagine going through your whole life looking like that." That's why it's left up to self-made freaks like me in the conundrum to remind people um, that nature abhors normality. Yeah. Um, and he says that um, he says that basically it's a mis- uh, about why there are um, these differences. He says uh, it's a mystery, and he says that some mysteries aren't meant to be solved. Um, Mother walks over uh, and he asks, "What's up with his friend?" Um, and he says, maybe it's the Florida heat. Uh, and Scully says, I hope it's nothing serious. To which the conundrum finally then s- speaks. Then says, probably something I ate. Just smiles, smiles. as he drives off. <laughs> the end. The end. Um, what did you think of this episode? I loved it. I yeah. really did enjoy it. Yeah. I thought it was so different, unique. Um, I'd be interested to see what other people think of it. Because yeah. I was watching it and I just... I, I thought to myself, I can if I can see a world in which people hate this, mm-hmm. and I can understand because it's not technically it's not the same 
feel as X Files. It's a yeah. different sort of feel to it. Um, so I wouldn't like blame anyone for not liking yeah. it, but as like a one-off episode, I really enjoyed yeah. this. I yeah. just thought it was so refreshing. And it really made me laugh yeah. a lot, a lot of points. Yeah, it was like a parallel universe episode. Yeah, you know what I mean? It really was. Yeah. Well, yeah. What about you? I fucking love this episode. So good. So good. The, the cinematography was great. Like I said, the shots were just weird, strange. Like in the fun house as well, and yeah. like the the one I mentioned earlier. Um, the characters, every one of the characters was just interesting. Yeah. Um, throughout, they were all fully formed as well. They all had a lot to say. They had you, you knew everything you needed to know about yeah. the characters. Um, the humor was amazing. Like so there was so many times where I would just burst out laughing. Yeah. Um, and it was just like campy fun because like X Files is quite po- fun. Fun. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it. It was a fun episode. X Files is so. I love it. Yeah. But it can be very po faced in the, the way how serious it is sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So to have this sort of campiness to it was great. It's refreshing. Bold. Is it bold? I don't know. We'll see. This has jumped to my top. Number one. Uh, number one? Number one. Oh my god. This has jumped to my top one. Oh my god. I days. absolutely is, love this bold. episode, yeah. It, it, I, I don't know what else is coming in this series, but this one has instantly jumped to my number I one. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's jumped to my number one. Um, it's definitely got potential to make it into my new top five. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not. I think Ice still tops it for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we both said Ice for number one, didn't we? I think in the last season, yeah, we did, yeah. Got new number two then. Oh, interesting. We'll see. We'll see it in the series. I know what time it is. You know what time it is. So let's just get into. Luke's production notes. Humbug was written by Darren Morgan. Uh, it was his first script in the series. Earlier in the season, he appeared in the second episode, The Host, as the Fluke Man. He also helped his brother, Glenn Morgan, already a regular writer on the X-Files, with the script for the for the episode Blood, mm. which is what we mentioned earlier. So yeah. He has I, had his hand in things, but this is first solo credit. I hope he gets another, another um, episode uh, after this. John Spoiler. Well, now I know he does, because you've told me there's a spoiler. Does he? Well, I might, well, I don't know. I probably oh. didn't go away. Do you no. want to know? Yeah. He has a lot of episodes, apparently. That's good. And apparently they're even better. Oh, superb. Brilliant. Because um, I've seen one of his episodes is the best episode of the X-Files by a lot of these lists. Yeah. Say. And one is next season. So oh, I'm looking forward to that. Superb. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Um, series creator Chris Carter offered Darren Morgan a permanent place on the X-Files writing team which he reluctantly well, giving it away yeah, <laughs> which he reluctantly accepted Morgan said he was uncomfortable initially uh, stating one of the reasons I was uncomfortable joining the staff is that I'm a comedy writer and this isn't isn't a comedy show so I was trying more or less to have an episode with a little bit of humour without telling anybody what I was doing yeah yeah you tell it comes across but yeah, I, I yeah. think it works and Oh, yeah. You might have it in there. Does Carter think it worked? Uh, it doesn't say anything about Carter, but other people did have opinions on it. Okay, go on. But I'll, I'll carry on. Um, Glenn suggested that he uh, that he write an episode about sideshow performers. Before writing the episode, Darren Morgan watched a tape of Jim Rose's circus sideshow and subsequently cast Rose and the Enigma as Dr. Blockhead and the Conundrum Oh, respectively. no way. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, this isn't in these production notes, but I read up on what uh, the Jim Rose Circus was. Um, and they're like this like extreme sideshow circus. Yeah. They performed a lot with um, like new metal bands. Like They did a lot with um, Marilyn Manson and yeah, yeah. Godsmack and all those like 2000s like metal bands. They did a lot of performing with them, which sort of fits that. Yeah, fits the yeah. style, yeah. Um. So you could probably find a lot of footage on them. I have to look into yeah. that, yeah, because I really liked him. Yeah, he was a great character. Ph- phenomenal. But it, but it sounds like he is pretty much that guy in real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't a character, really. Um, yeah, other guest stars uh, were Twin Peaks regular Michael J. Anderson, who was Mr. Nut, and Vincent Schiavelli, who was Lanny, uh, yeah. who we said was uh, in uh, Ghost, was it? And Yeah. Ghost, I think he was in other films as well. He's in quite a lot, actually. I'd look at. Uh, I read into him. He died recently, and um, I say recently. It wasn't recent, but it was like in the two thousands. Um, and apparently, he was like seen as a great 
character actor, apparently. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a bit more to read about him, if you uh, are interested. Um, Morgan's script turned out to be the most comedic episode of the of the series so far. No shit. No, no. <laughs> uh, the departure from the X-Files usual style made some of the crew, including K- director Kim Manning, Manners, uncomfortable, and some of the more explicit comic scenes were cut. I'd be very interested to see what they are. Yeah, so would I. Um, David Duchovny later commented, what I loved about his scripts was that he seemed to be trying to destroy the show. (laughs) 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 Which is pretty much the perfect line. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's like he said, well, what would happen if X-Files was in a different genre? Do you know what I mean? Like, and... I, I love. I it. think it's. I think it's cool. I love it when shows take a risk like yeah. that because the, you could. It's make, easy to do the same thing over and over that's, again. That's the thing. There's 24 episodes a series. You can make 24 very serious sci-fi stories. Make one of them a comedy, and you've already made it way more interesting yeah. or, or different than some of those episodes are going to be. Like the last one that we watched was quite. We didn't like it because, or didn't like it as much because it was quite similar to other episodes. Yeah. Because this one is just out of left field. Yeah. Um, and yeah, rightly loved because of it. Or oh, by, loved by us, anyway. <laughs> um, and the last note was uh, that the plot for Humbug was also adapted as a novel for young adults in 1996 by Les Martin. Okay. So, interesting. That's the production notes for this week. And some end, interesting thoughts. Yeah. The end of the episode as well. So, um, before we go on to uh, next week, um, if you want to get in touch with us at any point, um, you can uh, find us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and email. All the links are below. Um, I won't read them out now. Just, Take up too yeah, much time. Just search them, and we're, we're pretty much number one on you search most unwanted podcasts. Yeah, definitely. But anything you, you send in, we'll read it within reason. <laughs> <laughs> Let's caveat that first. Um, uh, also, as well, we do say this every now and again. If you can leave us a review on iTunes or any other place where you get your podcasts from that has a review service, um, that'll be perfect. Give us five stars if you, if you can, because that helps us bump up the ratings and hopefully get seen by a few more people. So, which is what we always want. Also, if you want to give us a shout out on Twitter or whatever, that also helps as well. Um, and I know a few listeners have done that. So, we don't want to seem beggy. Yeah, no, but it all helps. It all helps. And yeah. you know what? At the end of the day, sometimes it is a pain in the ass to, to to go out of your way to do something. But if, if you tell people how important it is for the podcast, then, you know, you, yeah, people yeah. might go and or do it. Or if you so. just enjoy it. If you think yeah. somebody else will enjoy it. If you want to give back in some way, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so next week, uh, we're looking at uh, the next episode, which will be the Kalusari. Mm. Um no idea what that is no, going to be. No, I've got no clue. Um, but anyway, oh, that'll actually be our 49th episode. We're, we're actually coming up quite quickly on our 50th episode. Exciting times. Um, and I think we do have something planned for that a lead little, up, don't we? A little treat up our sleeves, yeah, yeah I think. So. Do, do we talk about that now? Should we just briefly explain what it's going to be? It? Yeah. So, okay. Okay. You, 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 you do the announcing because okay. I've done enough talking. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. If you relax a little bit. So, f- coming up to our 50th episode, it also f- happens to fall um, on around about the um, uh, the year anniversary of the show. So, we just thought as a special little treat, we're going to do a week of podcasts. Mm. So, just ch- you can just tune in and download whichever ones you like. Basically, the show's going to come out next week as normal. Mm-hmm. And then... Every day that for that for that week between those episodes, we're going to do little, short, tiny little shows about each character and some of our favorite characters from the show so far. What we thought about them, what what we what we thought about them then, what we thought about them now. Just little bits and bobs, and we're yeah. just going to little character bios for the show. Um, and yeah, we're going to do a whole week where we, we release a podcast today. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, little uh, tribute to yeah. our to our. A successful year. <laughs> it has been, yeah. Uh, it's been more successful than I thought, but we'll save all this yeah. for the 50th anniversary. Definitely. Because it might all crash. <laughs> 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 um, but anyway, um, before we leave, we might as well stick with our tradition. Do you have a goodbye for us in a language that we do not currently speak? I do, yeah. I do. And I'm going to um, say goodbye to all our Hawaiian listeners. Okay. 
And I'm going to say to our Hawaiian listeners, aloha. That is, that is, yeah. I, I, but like, I'm also saying hello as well. Yeah, I think, that is, yeah. Um, I'm I think sure it is. Aloha is hello and goodbye. So, aloha, Hawaii. Hawaii, aloha. aloha.